My grandmother was the happiest person I've ever known. And it wasn't because she had all of those things that we chase today. In fact, just the opposite. She didn't have the perfect body. In fact, just the opposite. She loved food and food loved her. She didn't have riches. In fact, just the opposite. She raised her three children in a two-bedroom apartment on a postman's salary. And it wasn't because she had ease of life. In fact, just the opposite. During the war, as a girl, she was sent to work in a forced labor camp in Siberia. And she carried the mental, emotional, and physical scars from that for the rest of her life. But despite all of that, she remained the happiest person I've ever known. What did she know that we don't? What did all of our grandparents know that we don't? What wisdom has been forgotten through the ages? Contrast that with today. The statistics are staggering. One in four people are suffering from depression. This has reached epidemic proportions. Just think about that. One in four. Look around. That means someone around you is suffering from depression. And often, those people suffer alone in silence. Well, what's going on in our world on this hedonistic treadmill of happiness? We're constantly chasing. Our technology has brought us things that are supposed to bring us ease of life, bigger, more, easier. Has this hedonic treadmill, this chasing of happiness, in fact, made us en masse unhappy? And that's exactly what I wanted to pursue. A few years ago, I was on what I call the dark night of the mind, body, and soul. I was burning the candle at all ends. I had a full-time job that included many sleepless nights of travel. Three kids, one with special needs, two dogs and a lizard, a mountain of laundry and a mountain of debt that neither one of them seemed to ever get any smaller, an expanding waistline and many, many sleepless nights. I was on the brink of both breakdown and brand bankruptcy. And I went to the doctor and I said, I've got this weight gain, this excessive worry, this lack of sleep, this lack of focus. And without even batting an eye, without a second thought, he pulled out his little prescription pad and wrote me a note and handed it to me. There it was. The mark of a midlife crisis antidepression medication. Now all I needed to do was go to the pharmacy, have the prescription filled out, et voila. Life on easy street, right? I took that note and walked out of the doctor's office. Pressed the button for the elevator, and as I waited for the elevator to open, a distant memory came over me. I remembered 14-year-old me lanky and awkward. 14-year-old me, so different than the 40-something woman I was now. 14-year-old me, a straight B student that was being bullied at school. 14-year-old me, who discovered blues and boys practically on the same weekend. 14-year-old me, that find it, found out that her mother was dying of cancer. And for 14-year-old me, that was too much to take. The weight of the world came crashing down on me, and 14-year-old me decided to take a bottle of pills. My mother found me and called 911. And after a stay in the hospital and having my stomach pumped, and many years of therapy. I swore to myself that I would never take pills ever again. 
And as I was standing there waiting for the elevator, this all came back to me. Because the darkness doesn't leave, you just have new tools in your toolkit. And so I remembered something that my grandmother had said to me, to 14-year-old me. My grandmother, the happiest woman that I've ever known, said, You don't need smaller problems. You need the big old shoulders. And as the elevator doors opened, I ripped up that little nut, threw it away, and stepped into the elevator. And I never looked back. But that started me on this pursuit I researched and I read and I looked at all the experts, read the autobiographies of people who came before me, the philosophers, and I looked, what did the ancients know that we don't know today? What have we lost through the ages? And I realized that there were a few things that my grandmother, that all of our grandparents did inadvertently that we just forgot, that we don't do today. And I'm gonna share those three and to have pearls of wisdom with you tonight. See, as I was doing this research, I kept asking people what it was that would make them happy, that would make them fulfilled. And consistently I heard, if I had a better body, if I had more money, and if I had an easier life. Just think about that for a moment. How often have you said to yourself, I'll be happy when I lose 10 pounds, when I get that raise, when I get that new job, when I have the kids, when the kids move out, when the dog dies, essentially when life is easier. When something else. I'm here to tell you that I researched whether a better body, more money, or an ease of life actually makes us happy. And what I found out was that they don't. The first pearl of wisdom that I learned from my grandmother was all about your self-image. Maxwell Maltz wrote in his book, he was a plastic surgeon, and he would interview people before they came in for their surgery with their perceived flaw, their imperfection, their fault, and they would consider that if they just could change that one thing about themselves, then they would be happy. And when he asked them after the surgery, months later, are you happy? They weren't. They found another image, another fault, another imperfection, another flaw. And so he realized that your self-image needs to be changed. It cannot be changed through, through surgery. He realized that the habits that you put in place lead to your happiness or your unhappiness. My grandmother, Every time she left the house, whether it was to go to her exercise class or to the butcher or to the grocer, she would stand in front of the little mirror that was by her door and put on her favorite lipstick. And she would kiss her image. She played with it. She knew on a deep level that the image that looked back on her was the only image that mattered. So it depended what she saw in the mirror. Now, in our world today, we're bombarded with images in advertising and social media of the perfect body, no imperfections, no flaws. And so it's easy to get wrapped up in that. I myself also, I realized that I needed to add in the habit that my grandmother added of her red lipstick, and so I found movement and dance and exercise and create that as a habit. And it sounds overly simplistic, but let me ask you, how many of you put into your life habits to create your happiness? And if you don't know where to look to find those habits, just think, what did you do when you were 10 years old that you don't do anymore? What could you not stop yourself from doing when you were 10 years old? And that's your clue, do more of that. Bring that into your life as a habit, a habit for your happiness. The second pearl of wisdom that I learned from my grandmother was about satisfaction. See, my grandma 
and my grandfather before the war was trained as a tailor. But in the post-war, at the pulpe, ready to wear era, nobody wanted custom clothes anymore, so he became a postman. And every week he would come with his brown paper bag and he would hand it to my grandmother, his earnings for the week. And every week she would take that money and she would put it in little piles, one for the home, and one for the food, and one for spending, and one for saving. Now one week, my grandfather came home and instead of a brown paper bag, he handed her this new revolution that the post office had adopted. It was called a paycheck. Now my grandmother rarely got angry, but today she was livid. She told him to march right on back to that post office and get the real money. See, this is essential, and it's one of those things that we overlook, and all successful people actually know this. My grandmother was satisfied. She had satisfaction with her piles of money. She knew exactly that she had enough. She wasn't looking for more. She was satisfied exactly where she was. Now, once I introduced that in my life, once I really thought about that and processed it and really started living it, I realized something remarkable happened. I became very satisfied with what I had, and then I got more of it. The third pearl of wisdom is that life will give you trouble, will give you problems, will give you challenges, but suffering is optional. After my grandfather had died, my grandmother started dating the widower down the street. She called him her cavalero. She didn't really know what that means, but she I saw it in a movie or a telenovela, and she just liked the sound of it. She wanted to be the kind of woman that would have a cavalero. <laughs> See, she didn't focus on the sadness of having lost her life partner. She decided to make the rest of her life the best of her life. Viktor Frankl said in Man's Search for Meaning, happiness cannot be pursued. It must ensue and that it's up to us to, to attach the reason and the meaning for everything that happens in our life. Much like any of the other human qualities, the human attributes, like laughter or success or orgasm, when you're looking to aim at it as a target, you're always going to miss. We give the reason and the meaning to everything that happens in our life. So my grandmother was not suffering because of the challenges she had in her early life. She didn't cry over the troubles that happened throughout her life, and she wasn't sad at the loss of her husband. She chose to make happiness the meaning of her life. For my grandmother, happiness was the meaning of life. Maybe it was for your grandmother too, or your grandfather. Maybe it is for you, too. Because maybe, just maybe, when you can really get that, when you allow happiness to ensue rather than pursue it, maybe you'll just wake up one morning and realize that happiness happened while you had forgotten to search for it. And the last half pearl of wisdom I'll share with you, the one that's gotten me through many, many a dark time. Don't ask for smaller problems. Ask for bigger shoulders. Thank you.